Hi, my name is Cindy Rang, and this is my granddaughter Eliza, and it's time for Nana Time. <laughs> My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. All right, it's time to open up the box and choose the next kit. Let's see what you get. Oh, there's a big one. You can yeah, tie in that big one. All right, the big one? Yes. Okay, the big one. Do we need this? We, do, we, we are going to need that, actually. Yeah. And I know that you've already been working on Christmas gifts, but what this is, is this is this fun little project. It's really all about cutting. So there's a technique called, it's called broderie purse. You don't really need to know all of that, but it's specifically where you take a fabric and you want to cut out that specific image on the fabric and put it on something else. So we yeah. cut this, fabric. it looks like it's a weird shape, but it's because we didn't want to cut through anything. But we had some of this fabric left and we cut this up so that there's a little bit of everything. So see what's in there? There's some flowers, there's some snowmen, there's a turkey. There is a pumpkin, uh, I mean jack-o'-lantern, there's flowers and hearts. There's a, what's that, watermelon? Watermelon. Yeah, there's a flowers. Santa. There's a Santa on there. Here, let's look. Oh, see now the I Santa? see the Santa. Yeah. So see, Santa. there's a little bit of everything on there, which is kind of fun. This is way more than you're going to want to cut out, but it will at least give you an opportunity to kind of play with it a little bit. So this is a really fun, simple thing. It's just that it does require some cutting skills. So you will need um, probably better scissors than the little ones that we put in your kit, yeah. but we'll hook you up with those. And what we'll do is, um, we'll go in the sewing room in a second, but the other thing that you have is you have some wool. I'm gonna show you how you're gonna use that and how you're gonna so use sad. this, because this will be the backing for what we're gonna make is we're gonna make ornaments we're going to make some um, bookmarks and we're going to make some cards. So we're going to show you three different things that you can make and there's lots of other things you can make also but for us today we're going to do three different things. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go to the ironing board and we're going to iron this. So um, let's go in this sewing room. Okay, so we've come to the ironing board so um, whatever ironing board you have, I kind of like the wool mat, so we'll talk to the um, nanas and the moms for a moment. Um, the wool mat, if, uh, if you haven't seen these before, they're kind of nice because what they do is they absorb the heat, so they keep everything nice and warm, so it's almost like ironing from both sides. They are relatively expensive because they're 100% wool, and so um, just a small one like this, which is a 14 by 14, is like 20 bucks. Uh, and then they go up from there, but they are kind of nice and I like it for small things, so I keep one kind of handy. So what's gonna happen is you have your iron, you have your fabric, and then also in the kit was the steam seam too, and this is fusible web. If you're doing your own thing and you're not using our kit, you can use whatever kind of fusible web you can find. I like the steam seam too because it has two pieces of paper. There's a paper on one side and the paper on the other side. But then what happens is when you pull this off, you want to make sure, so feel how that's kind of sticky, but yeah, see how that's, this is. Like super sticky. Yeah, see there's a stuff here. Let me pull this off and you can see what it is. See what that is? That's mm -hmm. the stuff that you want to go onto the wrong side of your fabric. Because what you're basically doing is you're turning this into an iron-on patch is what's happening. So the reason that I mention that is because when you peel this paper off, make sure when you peel this paper off that you're not also peeling this thing off. Because that happens all the time in classes where somebody will peel it off and they don't realize that they've taken all of the fusible product with them. Whereas now you know that that's just some weird sticky paper, right? 
And I don't throw that away yet. I'll show you what I do with it at the end. We're just going to put this over here for just a second. And it feels like super weird. I know, it's super weird. It's because there's a little bit of sticky stuff that's kind of left on yeah, that. Yeah, you can even kind of see it a little bit. Yeah, and that's why people will sometimes iron this paper to the back and they wonder why it doesn't stick. It's because the fusible stuff, this is just little sticky leftover bits. It's not... It's not the real sticky stuff. Here's the real sticky stuff. It's this stuff right here. You want the sticky stuff. You want the sticky stuff. If you don't have the sticky stuff, it ain't gonna stick. It ain't gonna be perfect. It ain't gonna be perfect. It's not gonna work. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on top of our fusible web. And it's kind of, see how it's sticky? Yeah, it wants to stick to Yeah, it kind of right wants away. to stick. And we're just gonna kind of try to make sure that so that little heart he's kind of hanging over the end there a little bit we'll move him in a minute in fact maybe we'll just cut him is there a pair of scissors right there oh, oh yes see. there's a pair i'm just going to get him out of the way for a minute okay because otherwise he's only going to be half stuck and nobody wants a half stuck nobody wants gonna... a half stuck heart unless you're going to have it sticking off the edge which nobody right. wants that nobody wants that Let's put them over here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So now what you're thinking is that we're just going to iron this down, right? Yeah. And we kind of are. However, what's going to happen if this stuff right here touches the iron? What do you think? It's not going to stick anymore. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get all over my iron. It is going to be stuck on my iron and it's going to smoke and stink and turn black and bad things will happen. I might have to go get wine. That's what would happen. I know, right? So here's what happens. Is two things. One is we can use this thing, which is called a pressing, well, three things could happen. One thing that could happen is you could be super careful and you could just make sure that whatever you're doing, you are staying away from that edge. And if you wanted to kind of do it that way, where you're paying, I don't think I, I know, right? Do that. I know, it's just nerve wracking even thinking about it, right? So your other option is this. This is called a pressing sheet. It feels like plastic, which but seems it like it would melt, right? Yeah. It's actually made out of Teflon. So, you know, the baking sheets that we use um, yes. when we bake cookies, it's the same idea. If you do not have one of these, and I always have one handy, I use it all the time, but if you don't have one, um, parchment paper will work yeah. similar. Um, the same way. What's nice about this though is that when we peel this off it doesn't stick to it. It will stick to parchment paper but what you're really trying to do is you're trying to protect your iron, right? Yeah. You're just so, trying to make sure that there's no black smoke. No out. black smoke. Black smoke. Yes. Everywhere. Sorry, I put Never that down that. kind of in the wrong spot. There we go. I had a little bit hanging over there so mm. that was gonna be bad. Okay, so now now I can just iron and we can talk. I don't have to watch what I'm doing. I mean, I probably should watch what I'm doing, but really bad things are not going to happen. So I'm just People going, just like, Hello. Oh. yeah, exactly. And then even that weird little heart that's kind of in the middle of an island down here, Yeah. I can even get that one on there. And so I'm just gonna kind of press, 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 and I'm just gonna go press, down press, a little ways. Press, press, and pressing, pressing, yeah. and pressing. And then what will happen if something happens and I make a mistake and I do get black gunk on my iron, there is another product. It's called Iron Clean. I also keep this handy all the time. We sell tons of this. It's super inexpensive. How much is it? Five bucks. It's less than five dollars. It's less than five dollars and there's ten sheets in here. And I think you only ever need to buy one package in a lifetime. You just, you, you don't use it very often and one package will be enough for you and your family. It looks like a dryer sheet. It, it does. Is not, it does, right? But it is not a dryer sheet. I've had people tell me that they just use dryer sheets. Well, it's not the same thing. It doesn't work the same way. It's a sheet that has this special iron cleaner stuff in it. So all you have to do is you just get it on the edge of your ironing board. So let's pretend that there's icky black stuff on my iron. All I do is I just put this on the edge like this and my iron is still hot. And then all I have to do is I just kind of run it along the edge. See how it kind of smoked? Yeah. It's because there's, like... I know, right? Can you smell it? It doesn't smell bad. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Come along the edge like that. So then the iron is nice and clean. 
And you could do that a couple times if you have kind of a weird bad spot. If you want to take, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll go over just a dry paper towel to get that off. But you can see that that little chemical is yeah, kind of cooking off. Yeah. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do that, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. Because that would burn your hand. Oh, Lord. That would be super bad. And so, see, so you can see how much we've used of it. We just used to that much. So now the rest of this is good for the next time I get some, something gunky on my iron, yeah. right? So you don't throw this away. You just fold it back up, put it in the package, and that's why one package will last for a really long time. But it's a good thing to have. Three years, maybe? At least. It depends on how many mistakes you make, right? If you make 100, it's only going to last you a month. Mm, that is exactly, that's exactly right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this off. So see now what's happened. I know, it's a little hard right there. So, um, and I let it cool. You don't really have to, but generally I will anyway because then the whole cool. thing comes up. If it um, is still kind of warm a little bit, then sometimes this will stick to this. But all you have to do is you just wipe it and it comes right off. So see how that's nice and clean? Not sticky at all. That's Nothing on the iron. It's Not magic. Like a it's a sewing magic trick. So then, now what we can do, so let's say that we, now we did a whole bunch of these, but let's say that we decided we were not going to use all of them. If you're going to store this, that's what I use the rest of this piece for, is I just put that back. Otherwise, you don't even know where that's gonna end up. Mm -hmm. So I just, whatever I have left, I'll put that paper kind of on top of that, so that's what happens. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is let's look at these. Let's just grab this poor little lonely heart right here. Yeah. Does he I'm seem? Does heart. she seem lonely? A little bit. Okay. She's still touching, but she's not touching like perfectly. Right. So now she's got. So see, she's got the fabric and all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut her out. So mm -hmm. I would use some really good. These aren't great scissors, but, but this is what I have in my hand at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Kind of go along the edge of it, right? Yeah, I'm just going to cut this out. And you can cut this out with a little bit of that fabric left on it, or you can cut a little bit closer to the red. You can kind of do whatever you'd like to do. That's what makes it kind of fun. And so then after you cut this out, you can kind like of trim it up a little bit. It looks like a regular heart, but it, it does. still has that stuff it on it. It still has that stuff on there because now what's going to happen is you might give it just one more tiny little, and you know, again, you just want to make sure you don't have any gunk you know, around the edge there that's going to get on the iron. But sometimes I'll give it one last little press. But now what we have is we have this iron-on heart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a whole bunch of them, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to make with them. So what we have is we have some of our, so we've cut these into sort of usable pieces, right? Yeah. And so we have two paper plates here. So what we're going to do is as we're sitting here watching a movie, doing whatever, is we're just going to go ahead and cut these out. And we're just going to let all of our garbage drop right on. Oh, it's like peeling a potato, you know, can you make it all the way around? Okay, so I've cut out this little heart. So he's a good one. So he's going to go down there, up here. This is where all of the garbage falls. So all of the garbage here. And then that way you don't lose fun little bits that you feel like you wanted. So we have all of the garbage up here. And then as you keep cutting, and then as soon as you get done, I kind of like to cut. Do you like to cut? Yeah. I do too. Cute, right? And then we'll put the good ones, tuck Cute. them underneath them. And we'll just keep cutting. Cut, cut, cut. Oh, this is so mean. Okay, you're up. Don't cut your finger. Yeah, <laughs> Emily. Which one should I do first? Mm, I would do him. Me too. He's adorable. I think I'm going to cut him. Yeah, because you can cut him into smaller pieces that are more workable. And again, just so that this doesn't get thrown away, since this is good ones, let's just put him okay. underneath yeah. there. There you go. And then all of your garbage goes right there. Okay. Having good scissors is really important. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy and important. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a good cutter. 
Okay, so Eliza has been really busy, and again, we use the top one for her garbage, and then the bottom is where all of her cuttings are. So she has a whole bunch that she has already cut out of the fabric that we provided. So again, if you went ahead and got the kit from us, this is what you have is a whole bunch of different things that are very seasonal that'll work out great. And once everything is cut out, the other thing that we've put in your guys' kit is we've put a couple of tags and a card with an envelope. And then we've also put in some um, wool, uh, some wool felt. Because what you can do with this is once you've cut everything out, all you have to do is you just take off the paper part, which reveals this little sticky part. And we're gonna sit this down. And then you do have, if, again, if you got the kit from us, you do have a ball of pearl cotton that is in the project we're doing next week so you can sneak this out or take some of the thread left over from your um, kumihimo because then all you do is you take your thread and you're just going to tuck it so see this is sticky anyway do you see that yeah so then that's just going to stick onto that we've got that coming up at the top right there we're going to put this down on our and then we're going to fuse it. So we'll come over to the iron, we'll hit that, I think that's out of the shot, right? So we're gonna iron that, and then all you do is you cut around it one more time. And as you cut around it one more time, then what you have is that black wool has locked in your little tag. So you have a nice little ornament, it can be a gift bag, it can be a couple different things. Same thing with your cards and with your tags. You just peel off your paper, stick that down, and then you can go ahead and write something on your card, write something on your gift tag, and you can make something nice and personal. One thing I just like to mention about Fusible Web is that Fusible Web is not actually permanent. So if you've decided to take these little cutouts and put them on a quilt, you do have to then go ahead and stitch them down because by about the third washing, it's going to lift off. But of course, we're not going to wash our ornaments. We're certainly not going to wash no. our cards or our gift tags. That would so, just ruin it. Oh, it would totally ruin it, so not necessary. So anyway, super fun thing, and we're excited to show you your project that we're going to do next week. We're using some of our leftover bits from this for um, a little project, so a little teaser for next week. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.